Welcome to another series episode of Kevin's Building an RC Skydiver. All right, this is our second episode, our second part. If you haven't guessed by now, today we are focusing on the innards, the the part of our RC Skydiver that's going to make everything work. As I said in my previous episode, working with transmitters, receivers, servos, uh, really working with them from scratch is new to me. So this was a new experience and uh, I'm happy to bring you guys along with me. That's what this is all about. So maybe we can all learn some, some things. So let's jump right in. All right, the first thing that should be noted here is that everything you see, at least 95% of everything you see was ordered online through Amazon. All right, each individual servo, the battery pack, the transmitter, the receiver that I have in my hand, all online that you can find yourself. And so the first thing I wanted to do right out of the gate was to plug in the servos, plug in the battery into the receiver, everything in that receiver that you see right there that I'm working with. Here's the battery cord that I've just plugged in. There's a receiver plugging in the servos right now. I wanted to make sure that they all worked, all right? The transmitter here or remote control already came pre-binded, bound <laughs> to the receiver itself. And the good news is I didn't have any problems. That was working just fine as, as you can see as I'm demonstrating. All right, there's the little 1.5 gram servo in my hand right meow. And I'm using the little knobby to turn it and actuate it. Now, the channels are fine. Those are channels one through four on the receiver, and you can't, you can't change those. And, and this is a six channel system, which means channels five and six, however, I can adjust and I can uh, move from the knobs to switches because switches, switches would just be more convenient for the purposes that I'm trying to achieve here. And I'm not gonna be using all six, I'll only be using five channels. I only need five channels for this project. So the second thing I did after making sure that all the servos worked and the transmitter can communicate with the receiver, I went ahead and went into my settings on my transmitter and adjusted those channels to different switches. I removed them from the knobs, gave them to the switches, and here I am right now just testing it out. You can see my little LED panel there that they're all working just fine. I'm gonna do the switches now, boom. Boom. And here we are testing them out for real with the servos. And I also adjusted the actuator arms on these nine gram servos here, these micro servos uh, that will be used to control the arms. I made sure that they were pointing the right direction and moved in the right direction, which would be downward so that the arms will pull down on the toggles that will steer the parachute. Right, here I am demonstrating a right turn and a left turn and a flare. And I realized while I was doing this that I wanted these servo cables right here to point downward inside the body of the skydiver because the location of the receiver will be below these servos. There'd be no reason to have these cables running up top and then coming back down and around. It'd just be more chaotic inside and you should want cleanliness and neatness and organization in your workspace. So, so in order to get this the way I have it right here, I had to go back into my, my transmitter settings again and reverse the direction of this actuation. And while I was doing that, I learned that I could also plug in a percentage above 100 for the range of motion or the endpoints. So I went ahead and set those to a max value of, 100, of 120%. That way the skydiver could have a little bit more pull when he turns, making his turn sharper. But although the transmitter is now set up the way I wanted, Two more questions need to be answered. First, can the receiver antenna be hidden from view in the skydiver's belly with all the other electronics? Or does it have to dangle outside the skydiver's body in plain view in order to make a connection with the transmitter? Obviously, it would make it would look more sophisticated if it was hidden inside the in the stomach. So I did this test. I just put the receiver with all the servos attached in the drawer down in my kitchen locked up surrounded by wood just like it would be inside the skydiver and then i just flipped some switches on my transmitter upstairs and walked back down to the kitchen to see if those servos actually moved at all and they did which means the antenna right here doesn't have to dangle outside the skydiver's body it can stay inside and i don't have to worry about not having a signal and watching him crash into the ground the second question is, do those 1.5 gram servos produce enough torque to actuate under the tension that's produced on them by, say, the weight of the skydiver's body pressing down on the drone's Bombay door release latch that this servo is supposed to release 
when I tell it to through the transmitter. Or also the stress of a folded parachute wanting to break out of the tightly packed container it's in. Can those 1.5 gram servos produce enough torque to release or to hold that, that uh, latch in place and not release the parachute under that tension. So, well, I figured if I just run a test for the most stressful of those two, which would be the skydiver's body weight, that should give me an answer for both of these scenarios. So I connected an arm to the servo that you see here, uh, which is pretty similar to what I'm going to use. It's a paper clip. It's just a little longer than what I'll be using. And I bridged it across this little chasm, <laughs> this gap here, where a weight was hung from the clothespin to, or the paper clip to simulate a half pound of tension. And when I throttled up, it released. So that was half pound. So I increased the weight to a whole pound and released it again. And it worked. Great success. It didn't even seem to be struggling at all. So instead of struggling myself to find a way to fit more resistance weight in between this little gap here, I just used my hand to pull on the paper clip as I actuated it. And since I had a few servos to spare, I didn't hold back. And I'll just have to say, I just have to say, you know, it looks can be deceiving. These little suckers are tough. It had no problem with over five pounds of tension that I was pulling on it. So the radio controlled system I have set up for this project passed both tests. Um, also, all servos are hooked up and operating as needed. I'm actually kind of surprised that um, I got through this part of the process, the electronics part with minimal hiccups or issues or problems. But maybe I should knock on wood because the next part is wood woodworking, carving out the skydiver's body and actually making the physical room for these servos to go inside and the battery and receiver and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's it's going to suck. We'll see how it goes. Until then, Godspeed.